was interesting to me was how obvious the results were. It was really instant recognition. Yes, this the pheromone is really there. The ant really left the trail. It really picks up. It really works, um, even in a laboratory setting. It was a great relief yeah. to have the experiment done so that we could get started on the second part of it. The trick from going from data to conclusion uh, was actually knowing what it was that I was looking for. Um, overall, I related all the, all, these, all the data together using the lift coefficient equation. Going from the data to the conclusions, you need statistical evidence to back your data up. It took a little bit of thought, but after a while, I was able to just compile all my data and I made graphs. And after I made the graphs, it was really easy to see which nutrient was the best. And I went from there and developed my conclusion and future work ideas. Once you have your data charts and all here, it's pretty easy to put together your graphs. You can make all kinds of visuals. You have a, here, I have a line graph and you have some bar graphs. Line graphs are really great for identifying trends and bar graphs are good for patterns too. All the charts that you see here are actually comparing all of my results for each experiment. And then at the bottom, um, with the ones that are mounted in the yellow, are when I ex um, compared all three experiments together to get my final results and my conclusion. So this is a picture of one of the narrow and deep pitting shapes after the, after the beam broke. And um, as you can see, it was kind of violent and um, the pit is actually right in here. After I did these graphs, things became more clear and um, I kind of thought about it some more and then I realized how I should go about in determining if the bacteria actually did reduce estrogen. I went to my statistician, I actually used people at my school, and I, I had them help me to figure out, well, this is how, you know, this is what it is, this is what it means. And then after that, it was pretty easy to make your conclusion. Okay, so once I gathered all of my data, I um, analyzed it with an F-test for variance and a T-test for significant difference to see which types are going to be um, detrimental compared to the control, which was just no pit. I created something called a 2x2 two two contingency table in order to determine the relationship between a non-severe nail biter and severe nail biter along with no symptoms of OCD and yes symptoms of OCD. I was measuring to see whether or not the cricket songs changed when the temperature changed and the more chirps they chirp, that I consider that changing. So the lower the temperature, the less they chirp. The higher the temperature, the more they chirped. And that's what happened and I even found a direct linear correlation between them. A regular fly takes about four seconds to reach the top of a fly vial which is 6.5 centimeters long and a fly with Alzheimer's takes nine seconds to reach the top, so there's a big differentiation between the two. I knew that when I synthesized um, quantum dots, they absorb light and they emit light, right? I thought that my result would be a decrease in absorbance or a decrease in light emission, especially light emission of the particles. Nonetheless, what I got was that when I had calcium, the, the as more calcium I had, the greater light absorbance I had. We heard from the students many different ways of analyzing data because, of course, their experiments had a great variety of questions to pursue. Sometimes a simple graph worked beautifully and had the exhilaration of putting point after point and discovering, gee, they're in a straight line. So that shows the firm correlation between two key variables that were at the heart of their whole uh, study. Other times it required much more subtle analysis of data that was not obvious at first what it was telling you. And they had to learn from mentors or the web or some other way, uh, the techniques to carry out fairly high level statistical analysis. Having gone through the arduous effort of data analysis, including uncertainties, they are ready for the next stage, the conclusions of their work.